Hello beautiful yogis, we're going to have a look at the chakras today and you might also after this video want to have a look at our chakra meditation video and really sit and feel the chakras because really it's the direct experience of your own chakras that gives us an understanding of what lessons we might need to be learning and what processes we're going through and universal messages that will come through for us. But just more on a knowledge level for today, just so we get an understanding of actually what the chakras represent. And they all uh, represent universal life lessons that are common to every single human being. So if you do happen to find yourself in a little bit of chaos internally and perhaps externally, the chaos is also being mirrored, just forgive yourself, number one, and accept that all human beings are the same. We all go through these universal life lessons and we all have emotions to move through. So everything's perfect. Just accept and love yourself where you're at. And um, let's have a look at the base chakra. So base chakra is right down here at the base of the torso. The chakra actually sits in the etheric body, which is the electrically charged sheet that surrounds the physical body. And the chakra, when it's open, spins and it creates a vortex and it draws universal energy into the chakra. So in this area, it governs the uh, physical body parts, but also radiates out back through the aura. So you can see the positioning here, the base chakra. So you can understand then that this chakra has a lot to do with grounding, very close to the earth. In fact, it's our portal that drives straight down into the earth. So when we're not feeling grounded, you know, if you're having times where you're feeling a little bit spacey, you probably want to put some red, this colour of the base chakra, put some red energy into the base. You can just visualise that, you can imagine that, and just allow that base chakra to open. So all about your grounding, being here in your physical body. Oftentimes I meet spiritual people who are really, really spacey and they're kind of floating around all ethereal, and I understand that you know, they're trying to create peace, but being peaceful without being grounded is not really a true expression of your spirituality. So your base chakra will help you with that. And obviously, being yogis that we are, we're all about getting into our physical body. It's really what we do at sanas or postures to really bring out that base energy. So moving up into the sacral chakra. The sacral chakra actually has a front and a back portal. Okay, so it's just here beneath your belly button and then in that corresponding kind of sacral area on the back. This chakra is orange in colour and again it's in the etheric body and when it's open it's spiralling um, and it's drawing that universal energy in. So around the body parts here, um, reproductive organs and then back out through the aura which is going to balance you out on the metaphysical level. So your sacral chakra, um, actually the Sanskrit name for this one is Svetistana. Svetistana means my own sweet abode. So again, similar to the base energy, brings you into the body, helps you to feel at home in your physical body. Your physical body is the temple of your soul and it's a way to express your soul energy, your spiritual energy. It's also got to do with a lot of sensual pleasures. So we have to remind ourselves that we are the God or the Goddess incarnated and we're allowed here on this earth plane to have a lot of pleasures. So what makes you feel like a God or a Goddess? What gives you that experience of the divine but more on a, on a physical level? So it might be taking long, slow soaks in the bath with lots of candles or it might be walking along the beach or might be enjoying really beautiful food and those kind of things that get you into that expression and that feeling of your physical self, those sensual pleasures. So give yourself permission to have those pleasures in life. Um, being a sensual chakra, it can also relate to your sexuality and in yoga we have a word called brahmacharya which can sometimes mean celibacy. It can mean being celibate for a period of time just so you balance your sexual energies out. Um, but it's a, more in my feeling, it's the appropriate use of your sexual energies. So um, yeah, sacral chakra. Moving up here, we've got our solar plexus chakra. This one's yellow. So it sits here, just kind of at the top of the belly area. It's got the corresponding portal on your back body as well. 
So it's going to draw the energy into the organs that sit in this area, so the stomach and the spleen and the liver and the pancreas, those kind of organs. And it's going to radiate out back through the metaphysical body, the aura. And our solar plexus is kind of like being yellow in colour, it's sort of like being our own central sun. So this sun switches on, it's a lot about your confidence and being radiant and being creative and all those kind of energies. So solar plexus um, really helps you to get in touch with who you are, express the truth of who you are with that confidence. And think about the creative things that you like to do as well. That's usually when you're completely centered in the present moment when you're again expressing your soul energy so things like doing yoga, laughing, painting, gardening, cooking, singing, dancing, playing musical instrument, all of these things, um, other creative pursuits that you might have yourself. This is what gets us into the present moment centered, alive, fully radiant from our solar plexus chakra. So heart chakra, this one here is the central chakra. So we've got the three lower chakras, the three higher chakras. So the energy is coming up from the earth, out through the heart, coming down from the heavens, out through the heart. So we call this one in Sanskrit Anahata. It's easy to remember, heart chakra, Anahata. Anahata chakra. It's gonna draw the energy into obviously the organs that sit in this area of the body. First thing we're automatically gonna think of is our heart organ. Think about pericardium, that muscle that surrounds the heart. And uh, it's really easy to tune into what the energies of the heart chakra actually are. We think about heart energy, we think about being loved, we think about giving love. And we really want to open ourselves up for that rich, true experience of love whilst we're here. To be completely vulnerable, and that's a key word, to be completely vulnerable, to break down all the walls that may be just in front of your heart and just to allow that experience of true love to be felt here. And love can be divine love. That actually comes from within yourself. That's the love of yourself and the divine spirit that you are. It's also allowing yourself to be fully loved, uh, perhaps in romantic situations, but also parents, children, friends, you know, all of these kinds of energies relate to the heart chakra. And perhaps your heart chakra could be blocking because you've got a dislike of someone else. That would actually block your heart chakra. So think about people that, you know, perhaps your class is enemies and perhaps open your heart chakra up and send them energy. And um, we remember in our yoga philosophy that we're all one and that we all deserve unconditional love. So what we give to others, we're going to receive ourselves. So beautiful Anahata, heart chakra. We're moving up here now into the throat chakra. This one is blue. And again, the spinning wheel um, opens the energy into your throat chakra. It's going to govern things like your thyroid, thymus glands, also your lungs. And on a metaphysical level, your throat chakra allows you to speak the truth, to express who you are. And oftentimes we want to express what's in our heart. So in a way, you want to draw the energy up from the heart chakra and let it be expressed out of your throat chakra. So really be in your power really accept and know that you deserve to be heard. And sometimes, you know, the throat chakra is about confrontation as well, but in yoga we always remember we never have to not be loving. So there's a way to be loving and to confront someone, to speak your truth. So we might call that tough love, but it's still love. So those kind of lessons we have to think about with the throat chakra. Things that will help your throat chakra, singing, chanting, really wonderful for opening up your throat chakra. We're gonna move up now into this third eye chakra. So this one's right here between your eyebrows, it's got a front and a back portal. And this is really about your intuition. Okay, so your third eye holds a lot of power. In fact, if you close your eyes now and just look inwards and upwards, 
you can just tune into your third eye. You can see if perhaps it's like looking into a black cave or maybe there's some colours coming through your third eye. The more we develop the energy in the third eye, the more we actually can see clear pictures. You'll be able to recall perhaps even past life experiences. You might get a flash of something that's going to happen in your future. If you're working with other people, you might see in your third eye uh, what's going on for them. So we get that sort of clairvoyance coming through the third eye. So yeah, this one is uh, indigo in colour. Indigo is like a combination of blue and purple. It's a bit of a different colour, but um, you can easily switch on your third eye just by imagining that colour opening through the third eye chakra. So our final chakra, this is the one right up the top of the head. It's very similar to the base chakra in that it only has one portal. So right at the top of the head and it just radiates and opens all the energy through to the heavens so that you're also able to be receptive and receive, take that energy in through your crown chakra. This one, you know, can be depicted either as violet, uh, sometimes white or gold in colour. And it really helps you to feel the support from the heavenly realm. So our angels and our guides and loved ones who have passed over. All of these uh, energies are around us all the time, um, but can't interfere with us unless we ask for help. So as humans, we're, we've got free will. We have to actually ask our guides, our angels, God, goddess, universe, whatever you call that energy. We need to ask for help. When you ask for help, Crown Chakra really will open up and that help comes in and assists you with what you're doing on your day-to-day -day life. So that's a quick rundown of your chakras. As I say, go over to our chakra meditation. Now you've got a little bit of knowledge about what these chakras mean, the life lessons that are common to all of us. And for you now, if you can sit in that meditation, feel your way through the chakras, you'll really get in touch with exactly what's going on for you and how you need to act in order to bring the highest peace into your life. Namaste.